like I feel like my mom. Oops, how did I turn it this way? Let me figure out which button to push. Fucking something new. Okay, we're gonna teach the littles how to walk outside with distractions. It's much, much, much different than what we've been doing inside. So in here, in the room, the training room, they're fine. They're phenomenal. They're flawless. It's it's easy peasy because it's this is so normal for them because we've been practicing in there. So I've got them at heel. I've got guys. I've got their full attention. This is all the same sights, smells, sound. Hey, enough distractions. Come here, good girl. You talk. You stop it. Shit. Get out of there, Tyler. That is my high value treat. Ugh. Okay. Outside, it's going to be a lot different. And so I want to, let me preface this. I absolutely, under no circumstance, would I ever recommend anybody working two dogs at the same time, ever. It is a pain in the butt. You're going to get stressed out and it really doesn't make sense. The only reason I'm doing it, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put him on a place bed when we get out there also, but you know, I'm going to do it because I want to show you what it looks like, but also I got too many dogs and I have to make this work and I can't. I don't have the time and the ability to just work one at a time. We got to get both of them out there because I got to be out of here at one o'clock. So we're going to work both dogs at once and we'll make it work. And it'll be the same thing. I'm just going to kind of marionette what I do with, with my hands. And then I'm going to answer questions at the end. So this is the most important part. Watch what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to take you guys outside the gate to start. Ah, ah, ah. Don't you even, sister. Are you nuts? That was a wild mistake. They don't know not to charge through the gate. So that's something we'll work on. But this is how we're going to work our way through it. I'm going to put you guys. No. I'm going to put you guys out here. And I'm going to grab their leashes. And I'm going to show you how. This is how we start our walk. This is how you need to start your walk. If you are struggling in any way, shape, or form, you need to start with this. And keep in mind, this isn't just puppy stuff. I just happen to be working these guys because I need to get them adopted as well. So, and I, it, it just makes sense to put them on camera and, and work all this through. But this is, these dogs, they're six, seven, eight months old. Okay, watch. They're going to charge through this gate and watch what I'm going to do. No, nope. Let's go. Uh uh. Good. No. Bump. Get back here. Nope. Get him back to me. Good job. Good. And look at that eye contact because. Uh uh, we're close because we've done so much eye contact for food, everything he does. You have to look at me to get a pass. <laughs> He's actually looking at me. He's just in front of me. Let's go. This would be so much easier with just one of them. Okay, so I want calm dogs and loose leads. Good. As we approach the gate, I do not want these dogs uh -uh, charging out the gate. Nope. We're going to do one more. No. Nope. And here's the thing. I don't care if you go before me. I don't really have a problem with I go first, you go first. The point is, I don't want you bolting out there. I don't want you bolting through the gate. So in order to get that, usually I need to go first. Uh-uh. Good. Tyler, you're doing great. Good job. That's better. No. One more. Good. Here we go. That's better. There we go. Okay, that matters. That's going to dictate your whole walk. That will dictate your whole walk. If you let your dog blow through that gate, if you let your dog blow through your door and you're trying to do this, and I have people tell me all the time, hey, I have people tell me all the time that they, <laughs> no, big pit bull just by. No that it takes them about the first five to 10 minutes to get their dog before they'll, ah, ah, no, before their dog will pay attention to them. No, on the walk. This matters, like right now, we're not, we're not gonna leave the grass. They're trying to go after this dog. We're staying right here, right here. And I might take one, uh, uh no, take one at a time. But watch, this is what we're gonna do. Look at them bolt. Nope, nope. Heel. No, right here. Right here. Okay, we're just doing our back and forths right here. Nope. Little bump. Heel. Good. Minimal talking. No. No. Heel. 
Good. Uh-uh. Heel. Good. Their nose goes on the ground. Uh-uh. I'm going to bump that leash and tell them no. Good. Heel. Good job. Good job, Tyler. Great. That's so much better. There you go. Heel. Good. Anytime they try to go past me, I'm going the other way. Good. Nope. Keeping them on the same side. My leash is my steering wheel. No tension. Just enough to pop their, their little noses back up off the ground. We're not sniffing right now. I give you plenty of time to do fun things. And this, this is not a time where you're just going to stop and sniff everything. Uh-uh. I need you with me. That's what pack walking is. Heel. Heel. We walk with purpose. We have a destination point and we walk together. Good. And then once they get really, really good, then you can do cool stuff like I do with Kuma. And I drop the leash. I let her go. I just recall her back to me. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Let me grab this. Good job, guys. Let me grab the camera. We're going to put it on the road. Now look, if this is you and you're still struggling, your first four, five, six walks might be right here in this grassy area. Do it. I swear to you, it will be worth it. Don't move past a situation or an area if you haven't executed that little area right there. That didn't even make sense what I was trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say, though. Heel. Heel and little bump. Good job, guys. Heel. Little bump. Yeah, that's great. All right, look at those guys. Good job. Heel. So get them a little bit warmed up right here. Tyler, I want you on the outside. There we go. Heel. There we go. Nope, right here. Good. Heel. Heel. There we go. I always want the dogs turning into me. So see how I use my leash to kind of guide them and I bump. Good. Pull them over to my side because when I go forward again. Good. There we go. Okay, we got our first distraction coming up. Heel. Good. You got it. Good job. Right here. Heel. Good. I use my leg to bump their butts, watch right here, to turn them, yes, good boy, to turn them into me. Great job, great job. There we go, good boy. Tyler, you're doing awesome. Okay, let's see if we can go a little bit further. So now watch this. Anytime they go out in front of me, keeping a loose leash, I'm just gonna turn right into them. Actually, let me put my camera back down. I don't think it's a good idea for me to walk with it. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to put it right here. Somebody holler at me if a car is coming. Okay, so we're going to walk away. Oh, fuck. Here comes a car. Sorry, guys. Okay, so we're going to walk away from you and we're going to come back and I'm going to show you what it looks like when I turn into them. Heel. So your dog keeps pulling out in front of you like this. You shorten up on your leash. You pivot and you turn right into them. Good job. There you go. You pivot. Good. There we go. And they start to fall back. Look at this. Yes. Then they anticipate that you're going to turn into them. So they're going to slow their roll and they're going to start paying attention to you. Paying attention to your stride, to what it is that you're doing. Heel. Good job, guys. Good job. They're doing pretty good. We're working both dogs. Heel. They're doing pretty good. Uh-uh. Good. Okay, I'm going to stop. You toss it. I know you know sit. Good sit. Tyler, uh -uh, I want your butt right there. Sit. You can do it. Good sit. And I have food for you guys. What good jobs you're doing. Good job. Great job. Okay, so wash, rinse, repeat. That's it. So for this, I'm not moving past this street. No, Tyler. No. 
I'm not going to move past this street until I have both dogs relaxed with me because I'm not going to keep letting them pull and pull and pull out in front of me the whole walk. It's pointless to do that. No way. There would be no point in doing that because it doesn't matter how good a placement you have your, your tools or your slip lead or your collar or your prong or whatever it is that you're using. If the dog is pulling against it, they're not with you. And for a lot of people, you know, that doesn't seem to matter until they realize there's a better way to do it. Because think about it this way. And this is the end goal for all of the dogs that I work with is off leash, no crates. If I'm walking a dog and I drop that leash, is he staying with me or is he bolting over to go sniff or smell something? If the dog's already got tension on that leash and I'm just, then the the only thing the leash is doing is just securing and managing. I don't want to do that. I want to build a relationship to where I drop that leash and it doesn't matter. Dog's going to stay with me no matter what. The leash is just safety precautions. It's just because it's rules. You know, it's the law out here. You need to have a leash on your dog or if another dog rolls up on you. So those are really important things to think about. You guys stop eating that grass. No, <clears throat> let me put, let me tie him up here and I'll work just one for a second. So you can see what that looks like. No, that's enough. Okay. Remember how we taught Utah a down? He's getting much better at his place. I have a place bed out here. Utah, come here. Sit. Down. Nice job, buddy. I actually don't even have anything to tie this to, so that was dumb of me. Um, well, son of a gun. I was going to hook it up here, but that won't reach. Okay. Here, come here. Good boy. Good boy. Let's grab you another leash real quick. Do I have another leash in here? They flood irrigated my yard yesterday. It's a mess. It's like literally a muddy, muddy, muddy mess. Can't even show you. It's so embarrassing. Oh, good. Okay, here. I have a big one right here. So, okay, a couple things that I want to mention while we're doing this is our leave it command and how important that is. No, come on, baby. And what it can do out here. So your leave it command, remember when I talked about teaching it and I said, I'm so sorry, this is all, use the carabiner. I, the leash won't, wouldn't, or won't go around these because there's too much, there's board right there. Otherwise, yes, that would have been a great idea. Okay, let's try this again. Put this one on you. I was watching another, another trainer teach in the leave it and um, it's the same concept. It's, I mean, you can do it either way. You really can. You can walk around with your dog. He goes to sniff or goes to pull or goes to reach out to get something. You say, leave it and pop your leash. That works. The only reason I don't, I'm not going to teach it that way is because good boy. Look at that guy. Nice job, buddy. Is because I can't expect you guys to hit that timing. If your timing isn't on and your pop isn't effective it, uh -uh. and your voice, like your vocals, if you're not doing all of those things, that's really going to get that dog to stop. It's not fair to just crank on that leash and, and tell the dog to leave it and your timing is off because the dog has no idea what that command means. So it, it takes a little bit to get that right. Now, if you're somebody that can get it right, then do it. If it works for you, then do it. I prefer never to cut corners, ever. I will forever do things with dogs. I'm not going to cut corners because the relationship that's built by doing things this way is unreal. So we did it when we said leave it with the dog. The second that they took their head off of the food on their own, they got a high value reward. So now when I say leave it, the dog is always looking at me which plays a big role when you're outside. So if I say leave it when I'm outside and the dog doesn't leave it, doesn't look away or doesn't look to me, uh-uh, down. Then I'm going to pop the leash and then the dog's going to snap out and be like, oh shit, that's right, I'm on command. She said to do something. That's where that comes in. It is a very, very effective command with cats. I have a lot of people that struggle with cats. If you do this in the house, <sighs> little dog's coming up behind us. 
Good girl. She's not going anywhere. You don't know. Okay, sit down. If you do an effective leave it, then when you're outside and you need it, it's going to work. It's going to work. It just does. It's just how it's science. <laughs> That's just how that works. Down. Uh-uh. No. Good. Good. Okay. So let me show you with her real quick. Same thing. This is what it looks like with just one dog. No. I'm going to backpedal when she goes out in front of me. Bump that leash. Good girl. Yes. Nice job. I'm going to shorten up on my leash because I know she's going to put her nose on the ground. And anytime she gets ready to, I'm just going to do a little tiny bump. Yes. Nope. So right here, here we go. I shorten up on the leash. Uh-uh. I turn into her if she's walking in front of me. Good girl. I want to go this way. Nice. No. The goal is always, always slap. Heel. Good girl. Get her turn into me. Yes. Nope. Turn into her. Yes. Good girl. There you go. No. See how much easier it is with one dog? No. No. Good. Heel. Good girl. Heel. Sit. Okay, watch what I'm going to do. I'm switching hands. My hand closest to me, closest to her, I'm sorry. I'm going to help put her into that sit right here. Good, sit. I want her lined up right next to me. I don't do anything sloppy. Nothing's going to be sloppy because watch what's going to happen. When I teach her how to do that down, guess where I want her to down? Right here. When I teach her place, I want her to walk right onto it. Everything matters. Everything matters. Everything you do and everything you don't do. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Okay, so if you're struggling with your dog, walking your dog outside, with distractions. This is what you have to do right here. You might have to do this for a month. You might not be able to leave your yard for two or three weeks. Get your little butt over there. You've got to up your what's important to your dog. If it's food, do your hand feeding for eye contact Eye contact right out here. If it's excitement and praise, uh-uh. Come on, get your little butt on there. Then do that. You can watch what I do to keep her attention because she's a puppy. She's a puppy. Everything's going to distract her. Short leash. I'm right down here with her. Good girl. I'm talking to her. Heel. Good girl. She's with me. Good girl. Nice job. Yes. Good girl. No. She does something I don't want her to do. I instantly tell her no and tell her what I do want her to do. Good girl. But look what I'm doing. I mean, I'm in it. My back is going to hurt when I'm done because I'm leaning down a little bit. I'm making sure that my hand placement's perfect, that my everything's exactly how I want. Sit. Because if I do it right in the beginning, you're going to have a flipping lifetime of just fine-tuning things with your dog. You won't have to do all this stuff over again. You just do it right the first time around. Don't keep repeating the process. Do it right that first time around. You won't struggle. Okay, let's switch out nuggets and put you on this one let's see how you do tons of fun and let her now she doesn't know the down we haven't taught her down yet but she's way calmer than he is so she won't have a problem just sitting here okay you sit good girl okay. get this on right no get out of there I had a, a shepherd husky a couple years ago, my favorite dog, my best dog, my, ooh, I love that dog. <clears throat> and we didn't leave my, I didn't leave my driveway for three months. I'm not even exaggerating. I walked him in the driveway for three months because he was a hot mess. He was so much dog. It was so difficult to get him reined in. And um, I don't think I did hand feeding for eye contact when I was doing that. I didn't start, I didn't really start implementing until probably a year and a half ago, something like that. Anyway, um, it was just overlooked. It was just something that was, I think I did it, but I don't think I did it in that fashion. Anyway, but that's, it took me a long time 
before we could ever leave that driveway. No, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Feel, come on, you got it. No, come on, good. So he's not quite as hyper as she is right now. He just wants his nose on the ground. So I'm gonna keep telling him no. I don't want your nose on the ground. Uh-uh, no, 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 good. Let's go, let's go, come on, no. Good boy, that's a good boy, that's a good boy. So see, I hype him up just a little bit. Yes, good boy, good job, buddy, good. If I just keep telling him no over and over and over, eventually he's gonna be like, well, I don't wanna do it at all then. What can I do, right? So if I'm just going, no, 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 it's not very fun. But if I say no, and then say, come on, let's go, let's go, you got it, you got it, good boy, let's go, come on, good boy, get him going, good job, bud, yes, good boy, turning with me, no, nice job, oh, what a pretty auto sit, you're so smart, you're so smart, what a good boy. What a good boy you are. Yes, Tyler, you're doing great, even though you're not where you need to be. Let's go, let's go, come on. Good boy, yes. Good job, buddy. Good job, heel, good boy, good boy. Again, this. Sorry, I don't know if that stopped. I just had a call come through. Um, all of this excitement and what I'm doing, you're not going to have to do this forever. Eventually your dog is going to, you're going to build that relationship and it's going to be where you want it to be. But in the beginning, you got to figure out what's going to make your dog tick. Tyler, no. Enough. Good boy. Good boy. Does your dog need a little bit more vocal encouragement? Does your dog need something, maybe, maybe a little bit of food, whatever it is. You really need to, is your dog too overstimulated? That's a big one. If your dog is too overstimulated, back off the love and affection. Back off the food. Make your brains, or your brain, make your dog's brain work. That's where, leave it. Sit down. Stay. We haven't gone over that yet. All of that stuff. Do that on your walk. If you have a high-strung dog, you need to be doing things that are going to make that dog's brain shut off and work. Sit. So I would do something like a sit. I would teach this dog how to stay put and hold eye contact. Yes. Down. Good down. And I'm not, uh-uh. Let me reset him. I want him lined up with me. Down. No. Good. Good down. And now watch. I'm going to slowly turn towards him and take a step back. And then I'm going to come all the way back to him. That's how you teach your stay. You got to do everything as a desensitizing, slow movement facing them. And then the praise comes all the way back over here. Because if I praise out here, the dog's going to jump up and come with me. This is the kind of stuff you need to do if your dog is super high strung. Let's go. Good boy. You need to work them in the house first, doing this kind of stuff. In the house first, and then you do it outside. Teach them basic obedience. Stuff that might seem really boring to you is going to be everything to your dog. Because you guys are working together. Teach them how to sit on a chair, how to do a place command, how to, oh, I teach them how to switch. We switch sides. I'll do that in another video. Come on. Let's go. I'll get Billy. I taught Billy how to do lunges with me. So now we work out together. We do lunges. He switch sides, switches sides. He's really cool. I'll bring him out for the next video. Okay. So that's it. I just wanted to do that for the leash walking. Let me make sure that I didn't miss any, well, miss. I didn't look at any questions. I don't know if there's any questions. Um, 
Why walk backwards instead of turning around into them? Is it heel when they face you? Good question. That's a great question. Um, it's just different movements, just different turns. So heel for me when I teach it, if you're in my Leash Foundation course, again, if you struggle with anything, grab that course. It's 20 bucks. It's got t- all this information is in there. And then I also have the Facebook group. But for me, heel is a designated spot at my at my at my side that I pick for you. So I work all the dogs on the left because that's how I was taught. Most trainers are going to do that because that's AKC rules and regis- like all that stuff from like way back in the day. Doesn't matter what side. Heel doesn't for me. Now this is different because some people will use, especially the guys that are doing um like French ring sport or they're you know they got their dogs in different activities. Heel means look at me. So if they want, they want like a focused heel. That's not what I want. Heel just means get back to my side. I don't care if you sit, stand, or down. When you get back here, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And usually it's just we're moving or we're making a turn. So I call out heel every time I do a turn. So the dog starts to understand, oh, heel means get back right here at her side. That's it. So when I do the one that it's called the back pedal or the reset, where does some, did you just two? Do you need to go potty, you little creep? Did you forget to go potty this morning? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So there's three turns. Oh, Lord Almighty, why did I do this? That was not going to work. Okay, come here. There's the right turn, the left turn, and the reset. And they all are effective. They're all simply for teaching. Come here, guys. That's enough. Come here. Nope. You're coming up here. Tyler. Beat it, lady. They're just for teaching your dog to learn to stay with you. That's it. So the turn into them, when I turn into my dog, that's the best move to get my dog to stop forging ahead. Like there's some dogs that just have this incessant need to be one little head, you know, one head length ahead of you. And if you know, personally for me, it makes me absolutely crazy. I can't handle it. So I'm going to turn into you all day long. I'll walk, 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 heel, turn right into you. Watch what I do with my leash. I keep it short. I tighten up on it. I move it so that my dog moves out to the side. And then I release the pressure. Heel. Yes. And then I release the pressure. My turn away. If my dog's going that way, I'm going to turn and go the other way. I'm sorry, my right turn. So if she keeps going this way and I turn and go here, I'm going to let go of my leash a little bit. And then bump right here. Heel. Good girl. If I'm, if it's a new dog, like when I work with client dogs, you'll see me in a lot of the, my older YouTube videos. I just go back and forth. I just do resets over and over. This is all I need right here to teach a dog to stay with me. My, my hips never turn from facing forward right here all day long. Uh -uh. Good girl. So this one, in my opinion, is probably like the most effective you really want to make sure you use that one stop no anybody see his thing i have access to the group so if you want if you want access to the group take the course it's 20 bucks and then it'll put you in that it'll automatically put you in that group um anyway so those are the difference in those turns and in that course i break down every single turn and what they mean and how to do them and why they're effective. Little boy. And come back. Where did you get that belt with all? Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So I was trying to do another video. You know, my one with Puma, how it like went, it just totally flaked when I was in Vegas. No, down. Down. And I'll let you off. Um, so I went to do another one yesterday. And I was just going to record it with no edits. I didn't do it live, just record it with no edits. And uh, and, uh, Dave, and my camera quit filming halfway through. This is from rayallen.com. The belt itself, like all of these, this is the like this is my favorite thing because it has little areas where you can attach different things to it. I have a couple different pouches in the house, but this this is what I'm going to use for the next video for teaching them their recall because it's got my what is this what is this called a flexi lead my flexi lead so this little holster is from ray allen 
And let me tell you, it is very poorly made. It is not great quality. And when I got it, I was so flipping jacked about it. I was so excited. And when I got it, I went to put, I have a big, huge, heavy duty, you know, and that's what they said to use was the, this size. And I put my thing in, or my whole, <clears throat> my flexi lead in it. And it was like the limpest, weeniest, it just like fell off. And I tried, I kept, I'm like, maybe I got a bad, what happened? So I ordered another one and it's just the quality of the actual product itself, but I'm not complaining about it. I'm just letting you know that it's poorly made. I don't know of any other thing like this on the market. So I will continue to use this and I will continue to send people there because all I had to do was reinforce it. So what I did was I took, this is industrial Velcro that I had. And I just wrapped it around the whole thing. So the belt still, it still slides, you know, on and off. But I just used the Velcro to secure it. And it worked. So I don't know if somebody else can do it better. You know, let me know and I'll buy yours instead of Ray Allen's. But right now he's the only one that I know that has this. And it's awesome. It's so, so, so worth it. I hate long lines. I think all of us do because you just, it's so, it's a pain in the ass. But this and then I'll show you, I'll do a video because I'll show you how I use this. And I still use like a catch lead with the dog because you need to have something. This is, you know, it's just like a piece of ribbon. And you want to make sure that you really have the ability to grab that dog. So anyway, um, rayallen.com. I'll leave all that stuff in the description. I don't think I did that before. So I'll put all of his stuff in there. And I think, was that it for questions? I think that was it. Okay, you guys. Oh, whoops. I can't see. How's that amazing one? I wonder if medium size would work. I can't believe they haven't either. So, you know, the, the, the holster is built for the extra large because all of Ray Allen's stuff is like for um, tactical training. You know, he's got all the Malinois on his stuff. So it's built, it's made for this, the size of it. So if you got a smaller one, this little spout right here, where it feeds out it would actually it wouldn't fit correctly you see what i mean like it would be down here and then it'd catch and i mean it'd still work i'm sure but i thought about that too because i was like well maybe i'll just get like 30 other ones and keep trying but it was it's the quality of it itself that is poorly made however again like i said i'll continue to use it and i'll continue to buy it because in my opinion the only thing out there or at least that's the only thing i found so if you use something to reinforce it, this is just industrial Velcro. It works really, really well. It's a, it's 16. I didn't even know there were 26. <laughs> I didn't even know that I was actually just going to ask you guys. I'm like, does anybody know if there's longer than just 16 feet? <laughs> but that's good to know. There's a 26 foot one out there. So if you'll try, if you know where that's at or just message on there in the comments where you, where, the, where I can find it 26 or do I just Google it? I'll that's probably what I would tell you guys. Just Google it. Um, I'll look that up. I don't, for training a recall, you don't really need more than 16 feet. And because it's such ribbony, you know, and most of the dogs are big dogs, you know, most of, I mean, the, at least that I have, there's a little bit of panic that comes from this. Like, Oh God, what if it snaps? What if they take off? What if it, you know, all the what ifs. And, um, and so if he had, if the dogs had more than 16 feet, you know, it might not be the best idea because, when you try to reel them back in and you don't have working gloves on, which I never do, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, again, I'll show you all that in another video and how you work through that. But that's good to know because there's still, you know, if you have your dog to the point where they all, they do have a good recall. Maybe like me, you live in the city and you just can't afford to let your dog just completely off leash. 26 foot is awesome. Or you're just going on a hike where you know there's not going to be anybody around or whatever the case is. Like, I just think this has came in so unbelievably handy when it's how I was able to fully, fully, fully get Kuma off leash. Because I knew she was good. I knew she could do it. But I was just, I was scared shitless because I live in the city and she'll chase cats. And where I go, there's always cats. You know, it was that kind of stuff that really, really panicked me. Um, it, it, again, it wasn't the dog. It was me. But having this was like... My shoulders are back. I'm like, we got this. We can do it. And then we start working and I'm like, screw it. We don't even need this. Unclip and, and now we're off to the races. So anyway, okay, you guys, I think that's it for questions. Um, thank you for being here. I'm so happy that this is helping. If it is helping, I know a couple people were um, finding some value in it. So 
Uh, whoops. God, again, I'm like my mom. I don't know which way to go. I will continue. I have a couple other videos that I'm doing. Uh, again, I'm I'm doing my best to keep up with the lives. I love doing the lives because it's easy for me. I don't have to edit anything. And that's why it takes me forever to get videos out because previously I do all the fancy edits and everything else and it just is so time consuming. And I have too many dogs. Um, but what I will start doing because I want to keep the algorithm, you know, engaging and pushing my content. Um, wait before you end. Wait, okay. I'll keep talking. I have a feeling you're, I want to say, oh, <laughs> before you end, I want to say something. Um, I'm going to do videos. I hope you have a beautiful day. Oh, thank you so much, Erica. That's so nice of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to do videos that have no edits. I might do like some fast forwarding. Thank you for making these videos. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, this is, this stuff's so important. And, you know, at the end of the day, truly, what it always comes back to is us. It's always, always, I have, to this day, I have never, ever met a dog that was not trainable. And I know that's hard for some people to hear because that you're probably at your wit's end and you just don't know what else to do. But I promise you there's more that can be done. And in my opinion, for me, the dogs that bite are the best dogs, bar none. The dogs that I have worked with that are human aggressive, dog aggressive, end up being the best dogs because they have so much in them willing to work. That doesn't mean that you're going to get them to do this. That doesn't mean you're going to train them and they're going to be awesome. And then you're going to put them at the dog park. At Kuma, one of my absolute best dogs, I literally, I travel with her. I take her everywhere. She is, I will never put her in a dog park ever. I would never do <laughs> like there's, I still don't let people just walk up and pet her. Some people she's okay with, but I don't allow that. She doesn't like it and she'll retaliate. And so I put her in situations where I know she's going to excel, but I, I created a lifestyle that works for her and I, because I wasn't, I wasn't going to let somebody euthanize her because they didn't know what to do. So, and it works for me. Um, again, when you go through these kinds of things, there's like, I had somebody tell me recently they were adopting a dog and she said, um, what did she say? She said, her, the dog that she adopted wasn't getting along with her dog in the house. And I was like, okay, well, these are the things you need to do. You know, we'll go through. And you know what it is. It's structure. It's all the things I talk about in the videos. And it's work. You know, it's, it's time. It's energy. It's effort. It's tiring, but it's not forever. You know, it's not forever. And um, the gal was so upset. And she's like, "I'm. that's not what I signed up for. I'm not. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't have six years to wait for these dogs to get along. And I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe I was words, but like, okay. She was honest about it. The dog wasn't at risk for being euthanized or anything. It had other options, so it wasn't a big deal. But the point is, if you really want it to work and you put in that time, you will be, you will be floored at the person you become. And you will never swear to you, you will never ever look back and say, I wish I wouldn't have got more disciplined. I wish I wouldn't have been more structured. I wish I wouldn't have. It makes everything in life better. Everything, everything. So it really, as much as I feel like I, I'm giving you guys dog content, it really, in my heart of hearts, I just want you to be better at you because I know you can do it. When you get better at being you, you, I mean, the world is different. You see the world differently. Everything's, everything is different. Life is better. You're better to other people. All of that stuff. I could go down a rabbit hole with that. I'll make my day every time. It makes me so happy that you all have dogs on your side of the country. Makes me happy people are good. Oh, thank you, magical Misty. Where where are you at? Unedited. I want to say I'm not the only one with a little chaos and dream. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start doing the other dogs. Um, a lot of them are are already trained. These guys I started doing lives with because they're not trained yet, you know, and you get to see from start to finish what it looks like. But honestly, they're easy. You know, they're, they're just, there's nothing to them. They're just easy. Um, I'll show you some stuff. There's somebody that left a comment on here and I know she's struggling. And I'm going to do a video with Billy because I struggled with Billy the same way. And I made the comment, you know, I want to shake my head. That, that's the frustration that would come from this dog. Um, but he's one of the best dogs. He's got so much in him and now he's awesome. But it took me a long, it took me months. I've been working with him for months since He's the dog, if you go back and watch the video of how to steal a dog and I'm in the ski mask, it's that dog. He was chained up to a tree. He's a, not aggressive. He was a, a tough dog because he's just so intense at everything. So it took a long time to dial him in. But 
it's been worth every single step of the way because I had to learn how to get, you know, how to stay focused with him, how to run the household, how to do all these other things and, and keep moving with it because I wasn't willing to, again, I wasn't willing to let him have a shit life because I wanted to sleep. Like that's really what it comes down to. I give up sleep so that I can get through some of this stuff. Okay. I think that is it. You guys have to go potty. Somebody's got the toots and we'll, um, I'll see you guys for sure tomorrow. Um, vi more videos that I'm going to do unedited. So I'll post them and it might not be a live, but moving forward, I'll just keep doing them unedited and they won't be 40 minutes long. I swear I'll keep them like 20 minutes under, under. Okay, you guys, we love you. Thank you for being here. If you're interested in adopting either one of these little knuckleheads, why do people do that to dogs, hurt them and all that? I know it's so, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think hurt people hurt people and hurt people hurt animals. Um, go head over to handoverrover.com. Or I shouldn't even say that because I don't have a post on my site. I don't know why I said that. Don't even, don't, don't go there. They're not there. They're on my Instagram. They're on my TikTok. Uh, so it's just hand over Roper. If you want to follow any of their stuff or if you're interested in adopting or if you are local and you want to start uh, coming to Pack Walk Thursdays. We're doing Pack Walk Thursdays here in Phoenix. And it's just me and whoever else wants to be here. The only prereq is that you have to have gone through the Leash Foundation course. And okay, that's all because I do better get out of here and I'm just jabbering. Okay, you guys, we love you. XOXO. Remember, if you want a better dog, put in the work. I promise you, you will get there. We will see you in the next video. Oh, leashfoundation.com if you need help with the leash.